So I know that you know what a horse is. It's a big animal with four legs that runs really fast. That's the one I always see in my city. What else are they good at? Running. Jumping. Being cute. Aww. You've heard the stories. Cavalry charges, sabers and glory. Basically a medieval Humvee. But there's one thing I just don't understand. Why would you ride one into battle when it panics at the sight of a plastic bag? Look at this, I searched just to ask Google about it. This is what it says. 1. Anything new. Anything new? Are you serious? It's like taking an old particularly sensitive toddler to the carnival. The poor thing can't understand a thing and definitely doesn't like it. So you have to drag it around for the rest of the day just because you don't want to waste your money. Except this time it's not only your money. It's your spouse, your life, everything you live for. This thing could just decide it doesn't want to be there anymore. Do a hard 90 degree turn and you're done. 90 degree turn, 90 degree spine. I don't understand. Like if it weren't for these guys, you wouldn't have shows like Ambulance UK showing injuries caused by horses half the time. It's nonsensical. You know that saying to eat like a horse? The average horse eats about 1-3% to of their body weight each day in dry food. If the average horse weighs 500 kilograms, that's about 15 kilograms of straight up grass. That doesn't sound that bad. A cow eats that much, but it's kind of slow and stands there doing nothing. But at least the cow won't have its digestive system blocked if its grass is a little bit too dry. You see, a cow's digestive system has four chambers. One, the rumen. Food goes here first. Bacteria eats the food. Two, the reticulum. Food here next. Sometimes food goes back to the mouth. That's where cows get the cud that they chew. Three, a masm. Food here next. Absorbs nutrients while grinding the food again. And number four, abomasm. This is the actual stomach of the cow. You can see how the cow processes all his food down to little bite-sized pieces to go smoothly through the rest of it without issues. Not the horse. Stomach. Intestine. And the worst thing is that unlike most other mammals, the horse intestine is not really tied in place. It just floats around. It doesn't take a genius to figure out what happens next. Now I can run! The hills await me! If I go somewhere like Reddit and search horse digestive system, thousands of posts pop up saying my horse is colic again, please help me, and everyone has some kind of story about their emergency with their horse where it nearly died and they had to give it lots of medicine to fix it. Fun fact, a horse can't vomit. Or burp. So all the gas gets stuck in there with nowhere to go. Oh. Oh no. I need to burp. Oh no. Anyway, let's say you've broken your leg. The hospital people just stick a cast on you, maybe pull your leg for good measure. And you're done. Give it a couple months in the Neil Armstrong boot, and it's all fine and dandy. But you're a smart fella. You know what's coming. You think an animal designed specifically for running and jumping would have durable or at least repairable legs. But when a horse breaks his leg, it can't heal it. No, that'd be too simple. It's so big and heavy on those gangly little legs that even a small break will effectively sentence it to death. A horse could put 125 kilos of weight on a single leg. That's like two of me, on a hoof of 75 square centimetres. It's not like you can force it to stay still for however many months till it recovers anyway. Either. Just like the toddler from before, a horse simply cannot find it in itself to stay still for more than a few hours. It must move. If it doesn't, it'll develop a terrible hoof condition and die anyway. But all that pales in comparison to what is probably the worst thing of them all. They sleep while standing up. <laughs>